day out since the new year and it's kind of a messy one. Surprisingly, Squacky was the first Jay I saw. Webster was with him too, no Snowy though. I had a feeling she was up in their normal territory and she was. Peanut was here too and not impressed that I only had seeds to offer. Already a spoiled brat. This is why I don't like using my newer camera, the Sony. Look at all the snow all over the lens. Blue and Sweet Girl looked less than impressed with today's weather. Hatch and Maggie took what seeds they could as the wind blew. The little birds fight hard to survive. On my way home, I stopped by Hermoso's and saw him for a few minutes. A short day, but it's stormy and at least everyone got some food. It was nice to see the sun shine today, a rarity around here. It hasn't snowed in a couple days, which is nice, and the birds love it too. Webster wasn't with Snowy again today. Peanut was here, though. Hello, little guy. Hey. Kiwi, Lentil, Angel, Mini Tim, and the other chickadees, too. None of the birds trust squirrels. They watch cautiously from my hand as one scurries around down in the snow. Just as I was getting ready to go up to Blue and Sweet Girl's territory, Snowy showed up. I wonder what she was up to. I was surprised to see the intruder Nuthatch in Hatch and Maggie's territory. I don't think they were impressed. Usually it's Kiwi and Lendl's territory that she intrudes on. For the Blue Jays and Peanut, I set up their usual little buffet. Of course, Peanut was here too, and on lookout. When the young female went for some, Peanut came down. For Hatch, Maggie, and the chickadees, I put some seeds down on a stump. Speck, the boreal chickadee I've known for a couple years, tried eating one of the seeds on the little stick, but the young female decided she wanted some seeds too. On the way home, I found Hermoso down in Snowy and Webster's territory. I gave him some treats and fed the very hungry Kiwi, Lentil, Angel, Mini Tim, and others. Wow, they went nuts for the seeds. The first bird I saw today was Peanut on top of a big spruce. I gave him some fried egg instead, and he seemed to like that. But he ended up dropping a large piece on the snow and didn't even seem to care. Just went on collecting what was still in my hand. After, he had a bath. It was only minus 10 degrees Celsius, but still it's below zero and I couldn't imagine bathing in that temperature. Brr. I suppose the thick down helps, but what about their legs and feet? Turns out most birds don't succumb to frostbite because there is little fluid in the cells of their feet, and their feet are mostly tendons and bones with little muscle or nerve tissue. It's amazing really how tough they are built. Obviously if this was painful for them they wouldn't do it. Or it could be that the need to have feathers in tip top shape outweighs the few moments of being cold. In fact, it's thought that washing their feathers helps to maintain the insulating properties of the feathers. And monkey see, monkey do, one of the juvenile blue jays had to have a bath too, and now was up in the tree preening. Peanut kept coming back between drying off and preening to collect some food. Peanut all cleaned up. Kiwi, Lentil, and the others collected some peanuts and seeds in between Peanut's trips.
When I left to go up to Blue and Sweet Girl's territory, Peanut and the Jays followed me. Of course, Peanut made them all wait to get some food. He really took his time. After this little bit of food, it was time to break out all the goodies. Blue was fine with a peanut, but Sweet Girl was interested in the hulled sunflower seeds. The next time Blue came back, he seemed to have a hard time deciding what to take. Decisions, decisions. Sweet Girl took a piece of an egg with a shell after, some protein and much needed calcium. Webster took a piece too and so did the juvenile female. And of course, Hatch, Maggie, and the chickadees got their share of food from me too. It was a nice day. I love leaving knowing that all my jays are together in one spot for the night. Another nice day today, only minus 6 degrees Celsius and the sun was shining a bit. I saw some crossbills in a tamarack tree on the way up to see the birds. I never saw Snowy and Webster in their territory, but I did see Peanut. He was a little skittish today, which was very odd for him. The nuthatches and chickadees were alarm calling, so I think that's what had him all out of sorts. Little did he realize, though, that the alarm calls were for him. The little guys do not like Ray J's very much. What are you doing? You little monster. Yeah. What do you want? The intruder was with Kiwi, but I didn't see Lentil. I guess the intruder was keeping her away. A couple of chatty broiled chickadees came by to get some of the seeds I had put out on the snow for the little guys. Wasn't much left at this point. Hermoso and Snowy were up in Blue and Sweet Girl's territory. Everyone got their share, including Hatch and Maggie. I didn't see Webster, though. If I had more time, I'd look for him, but I guess I will have to come back out tomorrow. My day started out with some extra active chickadees and nut hatches, Angel, Mini Tim, Kiwi, Lentil, the Intruder, and Juvenile Chickadees. They really don't stay still for long. Once I put my hand out with food, they all went crazy. I was eager to find Webster, and he wasn't here. In fact, none of the Jays were. Not even Peanut. So I went up to Blue and Sweet Girl's territory. Hello, Peanut. Peanut was the first one to greet me. I had an egg, but it wasn't broke open, and Peanut can't crack it open with his bill. I think he thinks this is a dirty trick. I cracked it open for him, and he happily stuffed his bill with as much as he could.
I went in the forest after and was happy to see that Webster was indeed up here. I put some food down and Blue tried getting some, but Peanut kicked him out of it. Blue tried again and Peanut drove him out of it again. But at least he got something. Oh my. Snowy, Webster, and Hermoso grabbed some food too. Snowy and Webster came back again, but I hadn't seen Sweet Girl yet. Finally, after 20 minutes, she joined in. The juvenile female was here too. Everyone kept perching on that stump. I thought I'd get some good shots of them back on, but they wouldn't perch for long. Hatch was chatty like always, and Speck the Boreal Chickadee was as sweet as ever, picking just a little piece of seed. What a modest little dee he is. The birds made it difficult for me to leave to go home because they kept following me out and I can't say no to them. I was surprised to see Feisty Jay. Hadn't seen him in a while now. He's such a bright blue, just like Blue's color. Peanut was here too, as well as the little guys. What are you doing? Lentil seemed less than pleased with the little bit of seeds I had. Almost like she unwillingly took a seed. Kiwi was a bit moody. He even got mad at Lentil. The little intruder was here as well as Angel, Minnie Tim, and the other chickadees. I found Hermoso, Sweet Girl, Blue, and the young female up in Blue and Sweet Girl's territory. Sweet girl. Hatch, like always, expressed his annoyance of the Jays. A bit of food settles him down a little, though. Who would have thought that a small bird like a nuthatch would have so much to say? I saw my sweet Hoppy today. Been a little while now. Hoppy and a few of her family members took some roast I had for them. Feisty Jay was with that young Jay who looks like Snowy today. I wonder if they will end up being a pair. Feisty Jay is a champion at taking two peanuts at once in his bill. None of my other Jays do that. Snowy, Snowy and Webster were here too. Peanut was a little further up. Hi! What are you doing up there? My little meat bird. I think he was quite happy to see that I had something different today rather than cat kibble or egg. He really loved that roast. It's been a while since I saw the other Grey Jay. I wonder where he's been. After Peanut, it was the little guy's turn for some food. Peanut proved to be quite quick and sharp. He managed to catch a morsel of cat kibble that almost got away. Oh my goodness. What was that? Impressive. My last stop was with Sweet Girl, Blue, Hermoso, and even the little female. Just a typical decent day.
On the way home, as the sun set, it cast a beautiful golden hue over the sparkling snow. Very close to home, my sweet Hoppy came by. I don't normally get to see her twice in one trip. I guess she was hoping for more of that roast I gave her earlier, but I had none left. There was Cat Kibble, though. She was cool with that. It's been several days since I have recorded anything. I barely get outside because once again depression has kind of taken a hold of my life. Getting a restful night's sleep has become a rarity for me. I'm exhausted. I thought I had this under control, but the last few years off and on I've been noticing it rearing its ugly head again. Lately it really knocked me down. Just getting out of bed sometimes is a struggle. The worst thing about this is that I woke up to what should have made my day. Well, maybe my entire month, too, or year, my book arrived at the door. While it did make me feel happy, I should have been much more happier than I was. It's horrible, but I was determined to push through this ugly illness and be happy. I even went outside to celebrate. And it was as if the Jays knew, too. There were so many of them out behind my house, so I put some peanuts down in a padded section of snow for them. Shortly after I went on my way, it was pretty cold, minus 19 degrees Celsius. Up in Snowy's territory, I was surprised to see several jays perched in a tree together. It was all of my jays, even Blue and Sweet Girl. Blue tried getting a peanut until Webster reminded him of where he was. Blue don't dare mess with another male on their territory. Most all of them are that way, maybe a respect thing, or just knows better, or don't care since he has his own territory. Little Peanut was here, too. Blue and Sweet Girl were more than happy to get out of this territory and were much more settled further up. Hermoso came along with them. Even though it was cold, I was glad I went out because it did make me feel a little better, and plus I saw all of my little buddies. I had a better day yesterday. I stayed home and ended up visiting my mom. That was nice. It was a bit snowy and windy today, but nothing I can't handle. My little guys, Kiwi and Lentil, and the chickadees fought hard for their rations. Stormy weather gets them going crazy for food. Little birds fight really hard to survive during winter. Webster, his mate Snowy, Hermoso, and even Feisty Jay were together. I was struck by Feisty Jay's vivid blue color. He was beaming in the snowstorm. Feisty shares this stunning blue color with blue. He hid one of the peanuts in the top of a spruce, smart thinking because it's above the snow cover. He will be able to find it easier later. I found the little ones again before going on my way. The next visitor I had was my lovely little peanut. He takes cat kibble and rubs it back and forth on my hand as if to kill it. They do that with caterpillars and other insects before eating them. The next stop was my last one, Blue and Sweet Girl's territory. The chickadees, Maggie and Hatch, came by first. While feeding them and trying to get Blue and Sweet Girl to come out, I saw a Grey Jay. It wasn't Peanut. This was the other Grey Jay. It's been a long while since I saw the little thing. He quickly collected what food he could. Peanut could be anywhere and wouldn't be too happy if he saw him here. At this point, Blue and Sweet Girl finally revealed themselves, each on their own perch. Blue's color was eye-catchingly bright, just like Feisty's earlier. So pretty. He seemed bothered by his foot, though. It was only minus 4 degrees Celsius, but it's still below zero, so he could be cold. I gave them a peanut, and Sweet Girl must have been really hungry because she ate hers right away. A squirrel found one of the ones that Blue hid and made quick work of it.
Peanut showed up here too and was his sweet self. When I left to go home for the evening, he followed me out for a few more pieces of cat kibble. Sleep well, little guys. Stay warm. I haven't been doing much recording these days when I go out. Today was the first time I did in four days. Pretty dark and overcast. I saw Hoppy and her family just behind my house. Her mate made sure to put one of the younger ones in its place. The only other bird I recorded was Peanut collecting some of his boiled egg. And then on lookout as the night drew closer. Winter can be pretty uninventful at times here. I woke up to a sweet sight from my window this morning. Happy and her mate sitting in the big old birch preening. Love must be in the air. In the woods just behind my home, I saw the chickadee flock I refuse to get to know or name, but will hand feed. I know too many birds. Once I name them, it's over. I'm attached. In further, I saw Squacky, and I believe his mate. It's nice to see him, because I rarely do. He even took a few minutes to eat a peanut. One of the boreal chickadees came by to inspect the peanuts and knocked them all down. At least one was left for Squacky to grab. Wasn't long before a squirrel came by. Oh dear, how much more cute can it get? After, I visited my other buddies, but nothing really new to record, and Blue and Sweet Girl didn't seem to be in the mood for being filmed today. Peanut, however, was perfectly fine with it, so long as I provided an endless supply of food. January was typical weather-wise and birds too. For me though, well, it was kind of weird and a bit of a struggle. But here's to February. I hope you enjoyed this Birdner Diary video. Winter is a little challenging sometimes, but it is filled with beauty, and it seems to be a good time to contemplate, to get one's thoughts and life in order. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Happy birding!